Oops, sorry. So Tommy just joined. I have no idea if this is going to work at all. Tommy, can you actually hear us? Actually, Tommy doesn't like to talk. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah, but it'd be nice if you could respond to me, tell me whether you can hear us or not. <laughs> so I'm going to leave this here, and hopefully it might be able to pick it up. I don't know. Just so we don't have a formal agenda other than to sit around and brainstorm about what we're working on next. Um, it might be worthwhile to mention that uh, Kathy is leading the group uh, that's working on workflow, which is another offshoot of the service working group, for those who don't know. And obviously those guys are working on it as well. Um, we are, that group is still gonna continue working on workflow, obviously. Um, and I know there is some interest from other companies that might join it as well. Uh, so what we're talking about here is doing something else in addition to the workflow stuff. This is not find the workflow stuff to slow down or stop. In fact, it's picking up speed. It might, it might end up doing that. So what it might, what it might be best now is to sort of take a step back and open it up and just sort of hear what you guys think in terms of where you'd like us to go next, right? So for example, do people think follow on work with cloud events is the right next step? And so New relative to service, what are the pain points you guys are hearing? This is not about me talking, it's about listening to you guys and great story. So let me pause there and let anybody raise their hand and talk to whoever wants first. Or, go, or I'll pick on people because I will do that. Of course, the ginger's not here, I can't pick on her. I go. Plus, and I were talking, and really, we, uh, we have cloud events, which is great because we can now bind data onto protocols. Uh, but we don't have a way for a service to expose what it produces or it wants to consume. So some sort of mechanism to have a catalog. But unlike Open API, have it in the clinical form that we develop with cloud events, like make a catalog of the cloud events that you could produce or consume. So we can query the application to see what the thing is put out. Similar to Open API, but Instead of being wrapped up around RESTful interfaces, what, what would it look like for, like, I'll tell you the protocol, or maybe you tell me what protocols you support, mm -hmm. and what's the conflict form that you produce? In discussions, the dog has shared with uh, some people from ACU API, trying to somehow match this, but actually, also they have some difficulties that it's really suitable. So I've looked at async API, uh, talked to uh, the friend that has been initiating this, and I don't, <laughs> so I think what they're after is more the general purpose messaging story, and, <clears throat> and they have also, like, they, they took the inspiration from Open API, which is very expansive, and they basically took then a similar expansive approach to you know, trying to find every message in the world and every interaction in the world that can exist. So I think it's a little bit over scope for my taste. But I don't think I think I don't think necessarily the idea is the wrong one. But um, that might indeed be a little bit too much. And maybe the async API project is also uh, would do well in scoping down. But um, I think the collaboration with those folks might be interesting. I've been, I've been sitting in their meetings and but the there's ways we could kind of like map cloud events to that, but it's still, it's, there's a lot of assumptions about protocol and yeah. instead of uh, RESTful endpoints, it's queues. It's yes. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a thing for, for queues, right? So that's yeah. why for, for, our, for our queuing side of the world, it, it works for us. Um, it's interesting because it, it targets queues, but for the polyglot protocol world that we've been targeting, um, it's probably not the, it's not the right format, but I agree that we sh that it will make sense to have a catalog of that sort. But if you allow for interaction, if you can go and query a publisher or a emissary of a publisher, a middleware, yeah, for what events are available, then you should also have some subscription, some, some method to subscribe that is also standardized. So I think I think having a a standard standardized API that says here's what what's on offer and here's how you can go subscribe. Exactly. That seems to be the next 
from, from an interaction perspective, it seems to be the closest thing for for push projects. So, so would that also have a query the schema as well for the event type for the event? So, I would. So, schema is a great point, and I talked with, with Doug about that. I think of schemas as something that we might want to put factor into a different thing and not necessarily make that you know, bolt that down so much to the cloud events per se. Well, I, I, I don't think that we can support the cloud events per se. We have yeah. to be, from the provider of the event, we have to maintain the schema. So a schema, a schema registry, so I think a schema registry is also something that I'm, that I'm, that I'm interested in for Maybe was, that's a superset of use cases because the schema registry will be. We have we have a ton of encodings now. Yeah. Avro, Proto, whatever they are, that are schema bound, that people love, and we have built something that is for asynchronous communication, where you want to go and put something onto a bus, have that show up in different ways, and then you get it on the other side. And now the question is, how do I get to that schema? How, how do I manage that schema? Having something like a super simple schema registry. Uh, yeah, right. That is not just asking with respect to so that would be that would be useful. With respect to this comment, which is a proposal, would that include the schema or is that something separate? So I think it's that's that's something separate. Something separate. I think that that's separate. Yeah, and this is more like discovery for a, a producer or consumer. Yeah. Uh, and then you could leverage some defined schema and then using those two pieces. Uh, Klaus could articulate a little better, but uh, then like so how to subscribe to these things. And then there's a third thing that Klaus could possibly do that fits into this is, is uh, the, the security store, right? Because uh, minimal end to end signature, end to end encryption, some notion of a key vault will also be, will also be helpful, right? Yeah. Not the, and it doesn't need to be so the super complicated. Or boil the ocean and W security stuff. But it can be we can be a little bit more you know, focused on algorithms and what's being supported, but we need to have a way to both exchange keys and store keys and uh, some kind of a evolved API would also be useful to have that. So that's the actually that's the three APIs that are in my head. It's it's subscription and discovery. It's Schema registry and some kind of a key vault model. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking, okay, no, no. I said we can, I'm not sure whether the discussions is for event with a synchronous or asynchronous. I think that's um, especially from like a certain type of point of view, right? If the event is synchronous, synchronous, asynchronous, or type of view. That's, that's the, the event doesn't have a synchronous or asynchronous. The request is synchronous or asynchronous. Can you elaborate, the a, little, <clears throat> can you elaborate a little? I, I, I understand the notion of async versus synchronous. I, I get that. But what would you want for us to produce in that space? Is it a mechanism by which someone can find out whether the producer is going to send an event and expect it to be synchronous or asynchronous? Or what, what were you looking for to, from the standardization perspective? So I'm thinking a lot from events source, right? Maybe events source would like a response. Okay. You know, so it's specified that it feels okay. like the same. So in many of the async cases, you can fan out, yeah. you know, to many different places. But if you're expecting this as a, you know some sort of synchronous like decision, make a decision thing, getting back three different decisions is probably um, a problem. <laughs> yes, no, and uh, you know, please hold them for further questioning. We have those cases. Yeah. 
we uh, and that like fan out queries where you go and then consolidate the results of this. But that it, it's questionable whether that's actually an event in the case. That's, I mean, so that's, that's, that, that's, that's, that's the question too. Right, yeah. that's the question because it, it meant we've we've so far tried to stay away from from correlation um, or like request response cor cor correlation and uh, the the question is how how far that is whether that is that's still the bet if it's and I think if if you think of that as asynchronous versus synchronous whether syn where synchronous is the request response pair it's you can use the cloud events format for that, certainly, if the correlation is given by the transport. But if you look at HTTP, then you know, the transport does the correlation for you. Um, but it's not clear that those are events. Anybody else want to raise a hand for control? Next step, I don't Yes, sorry. Is this specifically next step for cloud events or just next step for Next step for everything. Yeah. Anything related to the service works group to include cloud events? Great. Uh, so I'm Jeff, by the way. This is John Wright. We're both uh, at Microsoft on Azure and functions and some of the stuff. Uh, again, the apologies to Rock and Google, but like, I think one of the things I'd be interested in to, even just looking around at this conference, like there's a lot of uh, interesting and very cool tech that's floating around from native to open fast to nucleo um, one of the things i'd be interested in doing is using a few of the calls to just give people a chance to kind of present here's the decisions that we make in the building it's like here's why we do native eventing the way that it does or native serving or whatever else and then just like honestly have the dialogue um, it's, it's less around like we're building new things we're standardizing on existing but i think there's a lot of stuff that i just be interested in, in having discussions so is that informational or is it to draw uh, more correlation between the options? Maybe a little bit of both. Like I would imagine, I would imagine like we could present things on like here's here's why we build data the way we did with this whole base scale. And here's the pros and the cons. And maybe someone else hears that and they're like, oh, that I can see why like things like ordering are super important. And that's also not possible. So it's, it's kind of like there's a little bit of a discussion where it's like, oh, I can see why this would be a, there's no perfect answer for anything, but I think the dialogue is just pretty good. The architecture roundtable? Kind of, yeah, maybe. Yeah, it's yeah. about to be valuable to the community. There's like so many different service offerings, and they're like when we started looking at the cloud a day ago, right? Like they're not one to one feature wise, right? And so having like a series of presentations, I think, is actually really important. Yeah, I was thinking about the. Uh, Follow on piece of work or an extension to the serverless white paper that we already did. And say, okay, we had that in the past. Now, what's, what's going on with data? We have data. Here's why they made the decisions they did. So people can understand those projects and different architectures without the same sort of batch. And here's what they did and why. Yeah. I, I think, as well with those discussions, I think going a little more depth than the white paper necessarily, but um, recording those and recording like the pattern so that it's not just a hey we had a discussion and there's a video and watch it but like going into more depth around consequences of some of the decisions um, and it'd be awesome if there was like a format so that people could look at each of them in the same outline or something that would make it easier for people yeah. to kind of consume and check in on the different channels that's sort of a bad idea Else want to mention. Um, one thing along these lines is uh, I have uh, noticed that people outside a uh, fairly narrow circle really don't know and don't care much about the cloud events. So uh, reaching out, <coughs> evangelizing, uh, having a set of videos, particularly maybe integrating with different serverless technologies and showing that this is really a reality, and perhaps expanding on the nice demo that uh, we have built earlier. And uh, uh, make sure that we can present at various events, uh, various conferences. There is a little talk that is uh, evangelizing our content. Yeah, I'll have to admit, I was surprised when I came out to the keynote. That's great. Yeah. No one told us. Uh, is there a, is there a seat, you know, speaker bureau or something like this? Is there like, like, a, like a speaker office that they can manage for events? Where it's ambassadors, yeah. basically people like to self-identify if they want to talk about something. 
thing of this. You can apply for something from longer than the budget to like give a talk and meet up. You know, okay. Like that. So, so the, the other thing would be like the one of the things in um, we've got in the security uh, library on SIG now. Um, we deferred doing a white paper because there was like some debate about what the audience would be for that white paper and what that audience would want. And we're talking to Cheryl and the end user community about figuring out a way to, you know, engage with the companies that are members of the CNCF. So that might be interesting to see if there's an end user, meaning the companies that the like server um, cloud data stuff. If you were to pull out ones where you'd be like, oh my gosh, these companies should be emitting out of their products. And like specifically invite them to a round table where you talk about we like we think you'd be great candidates to use this, and this is why it would be great, and maybe matching. Um, because I think there's a lot of the serverless providers here, right? Like, here we have some compute, but there are only events. Yeah, so we have on that. I'm just thinking either to what I can do um surface um platform from here, which consume the pretty kinds of account events. Basically, I you know when they need the account to trigger on um, so this time will trigger schedule some compute unit, whether it's container, packet container or micro VM or GY or whatever, right? Um some compute unit can host and run some users function, right? Um, if we can give that platform to show it, there will be more other um, other vendor, other um, provider like joins in the hall. Yeah, this year we can also do that. So, how do you better plan if a uh, uh, uniform format for the different types of events, right? Yeah. When you say build oh, platform, do you mean build an architecture's sort of vision, or do you actually mean real running code? I, I mean, both. I need real code. So what's your, uh, so we've been talking about something that is, is related to you know, dispatching uh, code and whether we can go standardize that. So what is your, what is your, what is the goal that you have with that, with, with that standardization? Do you need to build, do you think we should build something that goes down to the metal? Or do you think we should go and create something that makes the code Agile between different different platforms. Um, so I okay, I'm thinking we should do the code down to the event because servers, right? We like we have service for group cloud events, so events are just part of it. I think the another key part is of service platform. If we while we build that, we might find out okay, there might be some interfaces we need to standardize it. Um, just for contracts, how would you do something like maybe a or 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 Some of the same points that um, Sarah and Kathy were, but I think um, it would be it would probably be useful for adoption to have some sort of adopters kit that would include um, like documentate. You know, we have the spec, but some real examples of you know, okay, here's how we've worked with you know one or two or three. You know, actual things. Here's the kinds of cloud events they're emitting. Here's you know actual examples of the strings that they're using. Um, he, we have you know we have cross tested all of our libraries against each other, and we know that they actually like if you write something in Go and you send it, that you can get all of the extension attributes when you go and pull it out of um, JavaScript after it's been passed through the C sharp library, for example. Like, I don't know if that works or not. I don't think anyone's tested it. And some 
some real applications where we can show that next level of value. So more of a packaged, here's what you can do um, to get event providers on board with this is a useful thing. And you know, um, I know that Knative has done a lot of experimentation with the GitHub event provider because uh, that lets Matt write lots of robots. Uh, to automate things on our work, code workflows. But, like, you know, maybe I see that there are some Microsoft people here. Maybe we could go and, like, talk to GitHub about emitting cloud events. And, uh, our entire platform, though, is emits cloud events. Because the event grid knows these cloud events, you can translate all the events. Does so that include? Go are part. you integrated with GitHub? Uh, no, <laughs> not yet. No, no. <laughs> because, because GitHub is an independent company. That we yes. Have. Uh, but I guess my, my, my point was that having one or two case studies of companies who have their own push stuff adopting cloud events would be really useful. So maybe GitHub isn't the right one. But we, have, we have, so GitHub, I, so I see that there is a desire. Yeah. And we, uh, Doug and I have talked to the respective GitHub folks who would be doing that work. Um, and we got two of them from, I just wrote email to Nate, and um, they uh, said they, they helped with, with what those events might be. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have to see whether we can go and encourage them to raise events in that format, or we can go and figure out what that bridge would look like. I mean, I'd also be happy to get a list of six or eight other companies that we thought maybe we should talk to them. Yeah, if I'm to do is go back. Yeah. Yes. It's well, open. Yeah. Do you do the thing where they're emitting events for their lab thing? Okay. Yeah. I mean, like I think that like um like the community um section, right? It might be need to have like a list of real life cloud events that are being emitted. So and then like kind of have like, more like go like yeah, tangible. Like, right. But like yes, yeah, ones that have semantics, right? Not. Rather than just, yeah, I don't want to say just rather than. Before I go to, yeah, uh, before, I go to before I go to, right? just to follow up on that, I actually, uh, when I talked to GitLab about cloud events, mm -hmm. they were actually um, interested in the point where they said, well, instead of PR, you know, do it, especially because they like the binary format of it, right? They're just adding points to the nerves. So they're open to it, it's just we couldn't find someone to do the PR yet. So maybe I want to volunteer. Like, you know, oh, that sounds right. sounds like definitely something. That yeah, GitLab is very interesting. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. No, I'm just gonna say, it's just yeah. kind of on the on the best practices and how do you do those things. I know that we work with some uh, sources, and they're like, okay, well, how? What do the strings look like? Is this an event type, or is this uh, does this part of the subject, or what does that look like? So I don't know what the forum would be for somebody like that. It was like, I want to do this. But I also want to do it right. <laughs> so, is there like would, <clears throat> what would the venue there be like? I don't know if it's more examples. And we have this discussion as well. In the past, we, have, right? we have an adapters section in the cloud events repo that said if you're doing a GitHub, GitLab, this is what you look like. Yeah, yeah. I think we did for some even less stuff. That's the only thing we have right now. We have the like, close to that. Yeah, yeah. I think it's sort it's of kind of further on from there. But, um, you remember the particular examples, and we did some of this in trouble. But anyways, um, um, yeah, there was a lot of sort of kind of like, well, what, what should these things look like? And what, like it, it was just you know, confusing, and it wasn't sure exactly what the right, it wasn't clear to me. Um, one of the examples right we now. bounced around a lot inside Google was cloud storage. Um, but right, so storage, storage is a single string. Yeah. What unit should that be? Should that be, you know, the project that's associated with a particular bucket or a particular object like there's different granularities that the source and resource now uh, or so that sounds like subject it, could be that sounds like a um, architecture we have this what, I think there's different forums here yeah that we're, that we're all looking for yeah where we now effectively we're all working on different things yeah but there is I think there's an aspect of you know a technical marketing GT which is like, oh, we built a thing and now everybody needs to know about it. And <laughs> unfortunately, it's messaging. Exactly. And unfortunately, it's messaging and nobody cares. Uh, oh, my world. I think we need better um, <laughs> so, so, so I think that's one aspect. And then there's the architecture, our, mm -hmm. 
um, where there's this best practices thing and probably videos about how we've been doing things. And that's not only for the serverless platform, I like Jeff, what Jeff proposed, but really also about the, the venting things that might be part of that. Kind of an outreach, coordinated outreach program where we have a, um, a video uh, agenda where we say, you know, here's what we want to go produce in that week we can make an outline and then everybody does the 30 minute, minute videos about their stuff with some level of commonality. So that will be one thing. And then maybe that we have analog to the, to the, to the working group call some kind of an architecture exchange where people who want to go and, and build cloud events, where we staff that in a rotating fashion with two people for three people, and then people can come and say, hey, I want to go build this, how should I go with that? Office hours. Office hours, yeah, they get that. So we do a three team for office hours, I think it will be used for much. I think we know from sort of um, innovation cloud event from the function as a service platform point of view, we have a lot of things we can do. For example, how we handle uh, force from events with low latency, how we scale up or scale up, and, and then how we handle the node connection. If your function need to access another resource in the cloud, how you can set up another connection that different ways to do it, right? <coughs> we can provide some design or some, uh, and some open source code that can have very good scalability, very low latency, and also very low latency so you have no connection. I think that will be valuable to, to the whole community. But there are quite some ideas there. Some like, people can discuss that and then implement it. Oh, I just wanted to uh, welcome and thank Ken for coming in. And He's our uh, initial top sponsor for uh, sort of this working group, and I really appreciate him taking a chance on all of us to get us where we are. <laughs> Kevin, did you want to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. I'm Ken. I uh, work at MasterCard now, doing uh, just cloudy things there. A lot of um, non cloudy infrastructure automation, not so fun stuff, but Kevin yeah, did a few stuff to pay the bills too, right? <laughs> and, um, I would um, I said that's what MasterCard's about, right? Yeah, yeah. It's with, the, with the underlying transactions run right? the bottom run that and stuff. Um, <coughs> but, uh, it was great to uh, you know Doug and I spent a lot of time <laughs> talking about how we want to do serverless and, and what we've now that was sick discussion kind of taking off. And so you guys are one of the pioneering groups within the recent CNCF of what could be coming to say. Model. A lot of the white paper work we did is still referenced. I think we had the first white paper out of a lot more groups. And so, a lot of great work from this group. And I'm really as involved as I'd like to be. My, my day job will keep me handling the time. So, as well as like for this, taking care of the um, Anyway, great to be here. Thanks for showing up from face to face. And I look forward to staying hopefully more involved because I seem to be getting less and less white. I'm going to do something. Um, I know people have mentioned in the past um, function signatures or something I think would be really cool. So I'm trying to think of this from a uh, from an end user perspective more than anything else. I know it's not anything to say accurate, but I think cloud events for the most part is more infrastructure open. We talk about in terms of middleware and routing and stuff like that. While the end user may actually see the cloud events, I think it's more for the middleware than anything else. I'd love it to be possible to focus on because it helps the end users out either from the sending or receiving side. Receiving side, having a portable interoperable function signature might help ease some of the tension or some of the people's fears of being locked into one particular top fire. That's when I'd like to the possibility. Mm -hmm. I think it's also be very interesting to be able to go and do this at the compost time, be able to understand that this won't go. So if you, if you feel very good, go ahead and uh, so producing a lot of to events of type X and you from the wire for function. That's why I don't want that to be a long time day here. And uh, the other part of the interest also is to go the other way around and just go ahead and, and 
and start out and say, okay, what event types do I have and what can I consume? And they want to see work and say, okay, make me one of those things. And you should be able, if you have a scheme of everything else, you should be able to go ahead and start producing functions where the code just goes in there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so kind of both of those ways. And I, I think there's some of the work already going on in some of the various places to do this easier, but it'd be nice if there was more. If you did all do this again. I mean, we have in in flash and functions we have two runtimes or three. Only how did you get done with it? Depending on how you look at it. And of course the stack looks different for you know depending on where you are. Um, and certainly um, to be frank, uh, I think we compete on implementation um, because we as you know, for the public health part. We certainly are very keen on making the cards work very nicely and making things super cheap. Um, and that's where um, I'm sure that's the same for AWS, and I'm sure that's the same in Google Cloud, and then there's the public infrastructure that, that people set up. So the, the, the infrastructure per se and the, the functions host, I would say, there's a great variety and with good reason. But um, the code could indeed have a you know, common set of patterns so that the binding to that infrastructure of that code is interchangeable. Now, the reality that will be, that will remain that if you build something for AWS or for Azure, that code will interact with the platform components, and so there will be some degree of lock-in. But um, as standardization progresses, there will be some other API, and I'm sure that CNCF does a lot for that. Um, we can get the code more agile. If you write a function in, so let's say you build a, you build a function in Java and you hook up that Java in the, function, in, in the functions code and you send messages and interact with databases, then you can use JDBC and, and, and JMS to be relatively agile across platforms. And I think that's something that customers are looking for from the attraction of Kubernetes, I believe. That probably even applies to the objects. Yeah. SQL databases and objects are seem to be well enough. Ah, SQL databases, I'm not so sure. You should ask your, your closest Oracle user or friends. <laughs> but you said JDBC, so. Yeah, yeah so at that, level, at that level, that kind of works, but if you start yeah. with native APIs and complex things. Um, so I think that would be useful to have, have just, you have to start somewhere. And if we can go and find a way to, to define the hookup, of functions into that infrastructure, so that it becomes interchangeable. That would be, I think, an interesting, an interesting idea to pursue because we have certain ways of how you know you have to write a function in C sharp so that we can go dispatch HTTP parameters to it. And we have a particular way of how you have to go write that function so that you go dispatch a message to it. And one way that's natural, I think, for us to go and start with is there's a cloud event, right? How does that get dispatched into into functions? Also, can we go and figure out how we can make that work? And then we can think about you know generalizing it up. That's what we said. We said we started with cloud events, and that might be worth the thing to say. So, 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 so one thing that you mentioned having to embed like an Azure runtime. I actually see that as a reason why we need uh, common function signatures, which is now I can take that same function. And run it on any cloud, private cloud, AWS, etc. I'm still I still might call cross into that other cloud into Azure in order to provide certain services. Uh, but at least then I have the capability of running that same function no matter what cloud. And, and I actually don't think that's bad. This this cross the the, the calling of cross services to basically use the toolbox uh, that we have the global toolbox that we have certain services that certain things match it. Uh, it's actually not terrible. So you go and get your compute over here, but if you want to run that through hundreds of services in Azure, um, or to any of the AI magic that I'm not familiar with over at Google, then uh, that's great. So so that would already help. Yeah, we can do some very quick dispatch part of the demo that they can use. Uh, you know, drop file onto Azure, send the cloud event to AWS where dispatch was running. Then call down into um, uh, no, right? actually it was a GCP that was running. Call down into AWS to do recognition on the image that was uh, uploaded. Send 
type the and then type the results back and into Slack. And so it's able to you know make up of course but stitching together three public files in a SAS service and use a public app that's one of those kind of this sounds similar to the stuff that the serverless framework has been doing. Is there a differentiation here or is it that this is I'm voicing requirements. Okay. Actually, I think if you were just talking about the columns, you would say you would like to have more commonality in the functions. It would actually make this like easier. Right. Yeah. But I heard two different things. I heard um, uh, the, the, the developer makes the API on the actual like, um, how to write the function, right? Which is one area that's commonality. And then I heard another thing, which is um, a function that I write that consumes a specific cloud provider services. I'd like to run that same function on another cloud provider. And those are think, two different things, two different levels, right? One is like, here's the way that the payloads come into my method call, right? I should have been And the other is, how do I connect and bind to this cloud provider service? And can I do that in an Azure function that I then say, take that function and run it on Lambda and expect it to work? Lambda might be that function, run that on a Google Cloud function and expect that to work. And I don't know that, that just knowing how all these different things operate today, the functions in it could be the same, but I don't think you necessarily expect that uh, I can just talk to other cloud services from. I think you have to start somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, sure. and so the reality right now is what, what the reality right now is right to code and that code is pretty tight, tight and coupled to you know, whatever the platform is that you are. I think I think that over time we will get to commoditization of the most of most of the basic most of the basic services, right? Right, right now we can't even agree on what the storage API should look like. Um, but I think we'll get there. Sure. And so so if we go and start with someone has got to start. So we start with that, and then we can also think about you know what does that mean to send to send Cloud events or CD cloud events. There are some standards in, in areas, areas like if you look at JMS or, or Messenger, that is, you can rely on that on, on Java pretty well. Um, there's, there, for databases, there's some stuff. And I think, and with, if, you, if you combine that with Kubernetes, where you can now go and, and post a, um, an inverse audition record, where you can go and take some a database and move that. To different places in the whole set wherever you want to be like. But then you want to run your your business logic in a in the serverless host. Then the combination of you know the serverless host that the platform provides plus the database you provide is probably not a, not a reasonable thing. So I'm trying to understand but though I, I agree with you, there are two different things. There's a function signature and there's how to connect up the services on the platform. Right. Is anybody actually suggesting we tackle that second one that we can up two services on the platform? Not that it's not useful, but maybe I suggest that we look at that. I think we will get that for free. It's just probably when the I don't know. I'm wondering whether, from a node's perspective, in terms of possibly for the next, do I add that to the list, or is it just an interesting idea? But we're not ready for it yet. But I probably not. Yeah, okay. I brought it up to clarify that. That's mm -hmm. what we're talking about. At least initially, the actual code of the developer writes. So the, the, the building SDK requirements, the function signatures are always the same, and the transport is directable based on interfaces. So you can set up a client and inject a transport, and the transport is transparent to the consuming function. So you can bridge to the receiver, and now I can, I can uh, add, you know, it's at compile time, or I can have a switch statement that chooses a transport, connects in with that, and then it's the same function that's consuming messages uh, off of uh, uh, also, or uh, any other number of mm -hmm. queuing systems, and that code is really awesome because I can locally test it with HTTP and have no server. I can deploy it and connect it to a cloud queue, and it just works. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I think having a standard function that can that we can agree on <coughs> per language, per yeah, per language, language. And, of course, and, and maintain conversions of my cloud into columnar functions per language would be nice, actually. 
maybe that's the part that we don't agree exactly yet. That might be well, I think that's provided by the cloud vendor. We, we support the, the cloud event function invoking invoke the signature. So, so yeah, so it's say that's out of scope initially, but some people might choose to collaborate on the actual implementation of that, making that happen, but yeah. that's not what we're trying to solve. We're trying to solve just what does it look like? Different users code. Something like we've got a couple of standardized ways, but you can import like a lambda transport or an Azure Functions transport and you know connect to the that particular way that Azure Functions today sends things in that may not be unless it is using one of AI tools or something like that. Um, I don't know exactly how you so send it, things into functions. It's different. The, the, the architecture for Azure Functions is, is you have the, 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 the outside host gets informed by the functions you load in for what it needs to do to start acquiring data so this this kind of triggers and then the so the triggers run and then when the trigger gets an input input request might have to go by http or MariaDB, whatever then and we have a bunch of those then it will go and and, and pick an execution uh, uh host for that so that's 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 a separate thing but the the, the fact that the binding that exists on that function correct me when i'm talking nonsense um, the the information that's on that's on the in the code in terms of annotations or in terms of configuration that informs basically your host of the of that. And then you can think of the code that you're that you're uploading um, in whatever language that is as the callback that's being called by um, the uh, by the trigger by the trigger by the trigger host. So the trigger host is the thing that the customer doesn't see and doesn't care and they just configure and they don't even pay for it, I think. Um, and then and then that thing then calls back into the customer code and questions, what does that entry code look like? I think that's the uh, I think that's a good one. The only like the distinction here which uh it's just it's an FYI, because all this I agree with the signature thing I think is interesting. The trigger host that can describe and the customer code actually runs in the same pod and all of that. So things like local development and natural functions just work because local connected locally and then it's both your trigger locally. Uh, and when you publish it, it's all running in the same thing. So there's not a there's no like we grab it here and then we throw it over whatever we should use some other thing. It just happens in one spot like a sidecar. So just one note speaking perspective. It's not like that was just a discussion point, not to say anything new to have to put some thing. Is that true? Or was there something new that no, that was just supporting the point that we would be great if we could get a common callback signature model. Okay. And I want to add, add to that point that for, from at least the workflow and orchestration perspective, having the signature is super important and having the registry is extremely important. Registry uh, of, of, fun, of, um, yeah, of events. Sorry, events. Yeah. The events registry and also like the signature for calling functions in the standard way in cloud events. Be super useful and adding on top of that the examples, right? So, if they're working on examples on how to do how to model events in, in, in a good way, having that set of examples for us to do the examples on top of that can be extremely useful. Okay. So, one more question then first. Like, okay. 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 For example, current thing, right? You go to Amazon Lambda, you have to get through the OSI membrane or some language, and then go to this, uh, that's a new access energy um, network. And the other resources to the network, you have to configure to quite some, right? And then I as well, I assume you also do, you know, quite some configuration. It might not be the same. I mean, the technology or even the syntax or even the, the, the number of configuration you do, you look at more analysis. All the common things you got that from common point of view, what is from some of this from level point of view, what it means for function, it will be very safe. So, if you can do that, so like policy, I think the policy document that goes with the function that says, Here's what I need for execution, for execution, yeah, yeah. I think you know, if you can um, normalize this, you can so that you know, as a user, I write a function, no matter whether my function is on um, which providers, so many providers, um, platform. I do not need to change my function. I do not need to change my function configuration. It's it's the same for me. Instead of you know, going to one provider, I have to do this configuration, go to 
but it's also liberating in the sense that you know you don't constrain the developers in any way to actually do this particular, you know, like you have to fit stuff in it, even if they don't fit in, right? But so, in, in practice, it doesn't work because there's multiple ways to put the same data in the cloud, like you know, binary versus structure. The, the data is there's at least three different locations and two different formats that need to be in. So, which version do you pass? Yeah, so I did like to and we, beyond that, um, if you pass it to the generic object, stuff like IntelliSense starts to work really badly. <laughs> so we don't need that too deep, but then, like, the, your, your, main, your main point is some signatures may not be trivial. Um, I think this is a definitely a different conversation about pointing inside of the record. Yes, right. Yes. The only thing I want to add related to if we decide to go after. There's not a lot of point to go after and tackle this unless there's um, a desire expressed for people to actually implement this. That's true right. for everything to be honest. Oh, I know, right. Yeah. We're glad it's it, that you know, a lot of people are trying to adopt it into the letter adoption, but we specifically have <coughs> people that have their own functions represented in this working group, or at least represented in this conference for sure, um, that like if, if there's not some level of desire for those people to actually support this on their platforms, then you're sort of creating some kind of like weird adaptive layer that translates the user's code to every platform without the platform vendors help to make that easy and we haven't actually um, got the problem. My, my, just from my point of view, and strictly my point of view is, as you start narrowing down this list down to one or two things you're probably going to work on, I was going to privately talk to some of the big boys to see if there's even a chance to help the members supporting this stuff. And you have to come back, no, that ain't was our decision on because you just don't want to spend time doing this, and like nobody does. Yes. Yes. We got to look at Now you can see. Do we count? Do who can you? The most big boys? No. Okay. Microsoft is not a big boy. Sorry. I have I have a thing. So um, a new contents. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. After you though, I do have a very good request. So. So, so this is one where an area where um, I'm asking for collaborators, and this might be a liaison thing, um, as that's classically happening between standardization groups, um, and doesn't require further work by anybody unless they really want to. So, there is an industrial auto, an industrial standard called OPC UA. Um, the OPC Foundation is um, an effort that has been started in the mid '90s. Um, and by now, um, in the industrial realm, every speaks, everybody has started speaking OPC UA kind of strategically. Um, and OPC UA covers affecting machine to machine integration, communication of telemetry, but also querying values, state, state updates. And that's on the platform, goes down to now starts going down to, to real time with Ethernet TSM, and also pushes events up into cloud systems. And we have a um, so we've been working with OPC, with the OPC Foundation quite a bit, and IBM has been involved in there as well to effectively collect, plan for you know, machine information, and route that up into the cloud, and so that in the cloud we can do further analytics, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and the OPC Foundation has 450 members, and it's, uh, the German Industry 4.0 Initiative has, has picked that up. The IIC has now picked that up in the Industry Internet Consortium, etc. I have been the architect for the um, for the pops up part of OPC Way um, six years ago. That's when we started, and then we shipped this back finally a while ago. And there are echoes of. Um, OPC way in cloud events and vice versa, which is no accident because of the personnel of that. Um, and so OPC way has, has for the path up to the cloud, um, a way where you go and you query the machine, if you don't schedule or when something happens, you assemble a message that is out of values that you read out of the machine. And then you send that its way, you can go and publish it over MPP or over uh, MUDT over HTTP, so it has a notion of binding. So I'm going to present on December 11th or 12th, 
cloud events to that group and will propose instead of having its own protocol bindings for OPC way, let's go and deprecate all that stuff and let's make that cloud events, which effectively hooks up that entire industrial space to the cloud events ecosystem. Um, so that's something I'm going to do um, uh, because I've been, uh, we think that that's a good idea um, because it also takes complexity out of the OPC way specification that kind of pushes it into cloud events. Um, and that will open up effectively that, that firehose of industrial data um, into, uh, which includes telemetry, but also alerting, and so all kinds of different event, event types open that up more or less for the, for the cloud events ecosystem. Um, you know, whoever supports it can go and play. And so that's the, that's the idea that if they, what we've done here is we've up-leveled from the protocol layer to something that is above that, right? There have been, there, there are a few credible protocols and we have all the credible protocols effectively covered in what we've done. And there has been war and there's always war between them. And there's use, there's use cases for all of them, right? There's a use case for MPTT, there's use cases for HTTP, there's use cases for ADP, there's use cases for anyone who use Kafka, et cetera. But we're kind of, people have been forced into this, into you know, making a choice. If we can go teach the OPC UAs, uh, we can say there's a consistent mapping, and we can teach all the OPC UA stacks, all the bindings, similar to what we do with the SDKs, then all of a sudden, the whole discussion about you know which protocol are you using for attaching to the cloud goes away and it becomes a tactical, technical decision for a particular route. I don't make a strategic decision for you know everything must be APP, but you make a tactical decision for a particular hop to choose a protocol. Are there gaps in what we've done for the uh, I don't think so. Um, the, the most of the so the OPC way has its own format. They have two form, they have one that's a JSON format that is just the you know, the content of the event. Our sensibility that we have is sufficient, um, and um, they also have a binary format for which you need to know the metadata store. So that also plays the schema story, right? OPC way has a schema notion, and so the question is, you know, how do you register those schemas and how do you distribute them? So that would be another, another topic there. So I find uh, um, there is interest. So our um, own industrial folks think that's a good idea. Um, I've had some preliminary discussions with some of the folks in the OPC way working group, um, and they also find that attractive. And uh, obviously, any further air cover from anybody in your companies who's dealing with industrial systems um, would be useful as a hey, it's not because if I go and present this, then it's it's easy to say, ah, here's another Microsoft story. But I don't want to make that a micro, I don't want to make that a Microsoft story. It's easy to so just bring that up as, as an area of collaboration. Um, which, um, where there is an existing ecosystem that already has standards that is effectively, conceptually, completely aligned with the stuff that we already have because of the overlap. And uh, so that would be super useful. Right. I think that is super exciting. Yes. Something I've been telling you, like, I've been talking to cloud apps for people, <coughs> you know, that there's a story of uh, you think Kubernetes and you don't want to pick your cloud provider yet. And I think the cloud events you don't want to pick your transport yet. Yes. Okay. And that's for me, that is the most important story that comes out of this is the 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 protocol that we have we have done a good job, I think, in the industry to go consolidate the protocol choices down to a few. Um, and first for, on the RPC side, we've now all landed on GRPC being the thing, and so that's that's now the most people are that, that put it over here. But those protocols that remain have no reason to be there. And um, but, but you can't make those choices because the protocol ultimately is a hop to hop decision. Yeah. You have a particular route, and on that particular route, you need to have more footprint. Um, it's okay if you don't have all the fidelity features. You have another route where you need to have, you know, whether the message is the, the message information is more important. 
uh, because of the, it's an aggregate that has to be acknowledged expensive. You want to make sure that you will acknowledge that, etc. Uh, so there's good reason to have to have different different protocols, and we should embrace the fact that there's uh, multiple protocols. And I think Cloud has put them in a place where we have that sort of abstraction. Ultimately, I would love for that to also work with you know the correct request response path, etc. But that's you know, a little bit further away.
you, you just spoke, so I was gonna, I was gonna pick on you too, but you guys spoke. <laughs> you guys, like, like you three right there, have not said a whole lot. You can't hide. <laughs> Anything you guys want to add? Or, I don't know. Of course, you could. Why don't you go? It's a nice way to be able to maybe collect requirements we have, which are specific for servers, like the scale to zero. Uh, related to what I think we discussed before, but the ability to, to freeze the cost of the pot. Because um, yeah, yeah. not always you, you want to really scale it to zero. Yeah, so that, <laughs> yeah. And that, that gets into those Kubelet APIs that I think would be interesting. Yeah, but I was going to pick on Oh, okay. oh you're raising hand to pick on somebody else yeah. to speak. Yeah. Uh, should we talk much about this? Part? Should I? Yes. Okay. That's awesome. You told me should. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I wanted to pick out like, two of the now three things. Uh, the most important is uh, for the, the workflow more specification. Uh, but I would like to know personally. Uh, what can we do to move it forward, make it more uh, relevant? Because I think it's an uh, interesting topic that everyone is trying to cover, but on their own way. And we have the opportunity and uh, talk about some of those workflows. I think uh, I would like to know, uh, as it was voted to the uh, no, no, the working group approved it to go forward to go to the TOC to ask to become a sandbox. Uh -huh. We had no over to actually do anything other than say yes, you can go forward from us. Wow. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I'm not very uh, familiar with it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, also related to cloud events and, and uh, workload itself. I, I, and as Mauricio said, uh, it's very interesting to have a way to define a specific cloud event types uh, from the sort of from the workflow perspective, because it, the workflows will interact with uh, cloud event, the specific cloud events. So, and it is supposed to uh, transform these cloud events, these events or these uh, payloads that uh, take into the workflow into something else and make decisions about this, uh, the content. So, having a uh, way uh, a specific way like a catalog or because I was initially thinking as you mentioned with async API that in the async API you have the types defined that you can reference some other external uh, JSON schema outside of the, of the file uh, so this would be very uh, useful for, for the workflow <coughs> so that whoever is using is interacting with the workflow or uh, even Sending events, sending, yeah, sending events or interacting with them with the functions. It is very important to know what types uh, we would expect and how and what types uh, should how the information should look like actually, to be able to understand the workflow and how it works. And yeah, the third thing. I wanted to let you know that I, I work on just to play myself uh, a small application to, to generate cloud events, uh, which is a, a React UI implemented in Java uh, that uses the Java SDK, the cloud event Java SDK. And if you find it useful, I'll share it with Scott and Evan. Still makes a lot of work, but it's useful. So this is an application that gives you a web UI for filling out a cloud event and sending it to a destination. Um, it, for you know, debugging yeah. and, and, so and yeah. but you can you can have a small form. Yeah, yeah. Did you send it to the cloud event Slack channel? Can you send it to the cloud event Slack channel? Yeah, I I I I shared probably I don't remember what I shared. Oh, it's in the Slack channel. Send the cloud. The CNCF. The CNCF workspace. The CNCF workspace. As opposed to Kubernetes Slack. Yes. For those of us who are on too many Slack, it's all right. 
that I said about the guys, going back to the earlier one that I showed you, you might be um, thinking about producing cloud events. It's fantastic to be able to go ahead and configure it on this test and on your main Yeah, it's got to be what you said. Yeah, no, it's. Yeah, it's when I introduced myself as well, so that we have been exploring the serverless business for a while now. Uh, since serverless is, to some people, it's functional as a service, so you to provide your code, forget about it. Uh, to some, it's really like more grounded, obviously, especially in the Kubernetes environment where uh, people try to do it as Kubernetes native as possible, so that when you're on your container, you get a lot more uh, configuration. And in the, from, from the class aspect, I'd say that I'm missing a little bit more the, um, when you provide your code, um, the system doesn't understand about what you can do with it. So for example, um, initially the Lambda uh, AWS was just mapping that it was one uh, single uh, level of concurrency. And uh, people who are adopting that are process isolation. So now we saw that maybe uh, we can even use process isolation, put a lot more functions in a single container. So that's our map. And then you can even go a little further. As people are providing their code, like uh, other service platform companies are providing that they might not even use containers to execute. There is a whole broad bandwidth of how you can map uh, users' code onto the platform. And if we wanted to have this really high level of abstraction of user brings and that was magic, uh, then it's missing a little bit of this uh, declaration of what the function, how it interacts. Uh, for example, I, so I appreciate very much the discussion about the SDK. That was very new to me that you would allow a common interface to find this uh, very specific platform function services. Um, so maybe there is an option to exploit that and then learn in retrospective about how the function should be placed in the network. So most of the departments out there are probably data center clusters, but when you're talking, <coughs> well, when you're, no, when you're talking edge computing and why there are networks, uh, then it becomes more and more. So yeah, that's a direction, like roughly speaking. I want to make sure the stuff like what you were saying is similar with Kathy said in terms of configuration of policy. Yeah, also for me, the selves, you know, seeing the way how we can interact and how she was going. Yeah, okay, cool. Okay, so I'll be following this like, something about that, which is uh, we're doing some talking with it, where the point is saying that there are different ways you can run functions, and you know, a lot of ways that the trade off between security and performance, you know, the latency, et cetera, that started things up. You know, we thought, of course, you can always run multiple functions as threads and then you know, process our there, security and security. And so it's interesting to think about that spectrum of security that you're able to provide and how much sure. we're going to get that out for the performance of the So I'm trying to sort of categorize this thing before I mention what I think the high level categories are. I want to ask a couple question of the group though. You guys mentioned lots of cool ideas, but what isn't clear to me is necessarily which ones you guys think are one low hanging fruit. Because I think one of the reasons the cloud events appears like it gave you so successful is it was open to small scope and like you said, low hanging fruit. But also, what do you guys think would be one of the more beneficial things to the community? Because you mentioned lots of cool ideas. Some of them are kind of grandiose, some were kind of small. If you guys were to pick of all the things you mentioned, things that fall in that category of low hanging fruit, but beneficial for community, because you've heard about a pain point from these people, which of those things do you think fall into that sort of group way? Anybody want to volunteer or share an idea with in there? I think those are the things that the most people probably want to focus on, but right? just trying to help focus our, our, our discussion. Yeah, you maybe want to say. Okay. I was a fucking city. Yeah. Um, 
said function signature and you said something more the second. Oh, no, just function signature. I'm just trying. Okay. 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 I think the second thing that I think Kathy talked about but didn't specifically mention is uh, interoperability, which is, I think, part of that portability is actually verifying that our stuff all talks to each other the way that we think it all does because there's a common spec and of course we implemented it right. Can you elaborate a little bit more to see how the Do we have example programs in each language that send events to other language implementations and do they actually get to the other side? Like so round trips successfully. Testing the first, it's a stack effort. Or so it's question. mostly a testing effort. So, testing, testing. Yeah. so to, to help try to solve that problem, that's why I'm working on the performance tool, which uh, you can write a cloud event as YAML form and then send it through a CLI that converts it to a, a chosen transport. Yeah, I think that's something we can solve with. Yeah. Well, I think it's low hanging fruit and it has high value, so that's evident. Yeah, your, uh, I agree. Yeah. yeah. Um, the only thing you just left oh, yeah. through to my ear is description API. Yeah, <laughs> description API is on the front side that I think is the, is the first thing people in fact there. It makes sense. But it's not a real thing to do. I mean, it's separate as code. Yeah. But I'm getting close to it. Yeah. No, no, it's, it's what I think that's the, 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 for me, that's the logical next thing for, for product. Uh, we're also uh, we're talking about a subscription API. I mean, that can also be uh, done to a certain extent. I mean, uh, first it would be an API, then you could think of I mean, routing subscriptions between different, I would call it dimension domains, so that they can be interoperable. Um, but first, the subscription API is. Okay. So, you, so, you meant, so, you meant to me, so you subscribe and then. That part is structured on behalf of yes, the Yes, functions are usually connected to some kind of event bus. Mm -hmm. Maybe that event bus that includes on behalf of the function rather than subscription to another one. Yes, okay. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah,
they should be the more confident that this is something that they can onboard easily and they can be productive. Really so finally, there's a final one, which is this is an official meeting. This is face to face that we don't have to warn that, but we should publish out the, the list and think of a way in which we can get input from kind of the old serverless working group uh, participants to get their input as well. But, you know, I think this is really good thinking about, you know, notes and, and comments, but we really need to be inclusive to those people who make it. Yeah, I know in the past I may have implied that you were going to come out of this meeting with a decision. I didn't actually mean that. It's more like I think you could help narrow down the choices and then bring it the result back to the full group and have a discussion about it. Yeah, but, but I think we need to separate out, you know, the current voting scheme of the file events to you know be able to come up with a way to it's fair to decide how we go after the next server working group. Okay, that, that, that was my point of order. Okay. Met, met So, okay, so I have a bunch of signature, testing improvement around prescription APIs, catalog discovery, search, anything else? Uh, I mean, whether or not it happens or not, I think it's very limiting. We just kind of refresh the white paper, you know, the jar reductor. Very, very little agreement has to happen for us to at least communicate the current state of the landscape. I'd also say, do you have? Any interest in making PRs good? Sure, yeah, absolutely. That's the idea. Yes. That's fair game. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anyone that wants to make modifications to the top, I mean, if, if it's controversial, you know, maybe we'll have some discussion about it. Yeah. <laughs> not in this room. Yeah. <laughs> okay, anything else? I did the one last thing that I wanted to mention the packaging. Whether you're actually like sending a zip file or whether you're actually doing a basic function or whether you're doing a system image, I don't know whether that actually falls into that category. But, uh, yeah, I was going to ask you whether packaging conduct is, is in the general category of function or yeah. uh, function signature. Well, I mean, it's part of what you submit, uh, not necessarily as a signature, but like how, like how you make your function available to the platform, I think, is part of the package conduct. Yeah. yeah, I think we have. There's a group of three things that belong together. There's, a, there's this policy idea, there's the, the, the packaging, and what the signature is, is like. The bring, bring the thing, have some declaration of what it contains, and what the, like, this, don't, don't, don't try to execute it unless you have a gigabyte of RAM. Um, and, then, and then a way to go hook this up. So I think those three things go together. I, I thought that you know, you're talking about the uh, as a serverless practitioner, I find it pretty interesting and how you broke things down. I'd like to see something like that expanded out to, you know, to have people on the cloud just get, get their input into that. Yeah, that was kind of yeah. Part of the, so part of the expectation, expectation was to be able to, you know, make it more interactive. And I think one thing that's possible is to, you know, use it as a foundation to start building on top of it and, you know, maybe some of the so you might want to post the uh, like slide up uh, and find the circle is top down. So this is uh, uh, I talked for no perspective, you said three things. Same three things again. <laughs> Packaging, policy, same structure. Okay. Yeah. So I was just gonna say this is kind of almost the first thing I brought up is almost this, whereas like I definitely I don't think Azure has figured any of this out perfectly, but for a lot of those things, there's a lot that I would be really interested in sharing like hey we've actually tried a and b and this is what went well and this is what really fit us later on like there's a bunch of stuff where it's like there's a, the reason we voted how we did is like oh yeah we actually we have some issues with this other approach so i love that idea of the kind of discussion of like this is why we made the decisions we have whether they're the right decisions or not and i'm assuming you would be perfectly okay with sharing your information not just through Viper, but on other phone calls. Yeah, well. right, that's right. And that's where uh, whether it's the scaling aspect and run fast, or they kind of went into the packaging aspect, mm -hmm. the signature, mm -hmm. yeah, there's a lot of other We made a lot of mistakes, uh, but I would be more than happy to divulge and be like, this is, this is my fault about this. Yeah, I think that's something that I'd like to Are we interested in that, you know, Doing some design and implementation of a certain platform. That's 
some of the low hanging fruit. No, it's not low hanging fruit, but it's yeah. a question for the group. So, yeah. The girls are like, oh, this is somebody's small group, right? I think uh, my concentration um, can't be very as good as part of the whole solution. But it's another very key part is the somebody's type of itself. I like to you know, mention, right? You have a lot of you know, uh, services here. It's like, <coughs> so, from my point of view, I also have a lot of design. You know, uh, thoughts and new thoughts and also lessons we can share, we can talk together and then come up with something very good. Um, you can download that all of it. What? So you can download that all of it. I think that there are already some implementations. Are we saying that you have a new implementation? We don't have this concept yet. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
a scalar or a scalar, you know, there's some component we can pick or provide value, you know, on top of Kubernetes. You know. Other so the whole service platform I will be able to provide in this way. I'm probably build some flowers there. And yeah. then but so there is something in the CNCF which is really in the app, which is build packs. They are how you package that, not how you run them. Maybe how you run them could be a serverless framework thing that get the good of it. And it would be integrating with build back, which is in the sandbox. So, so that was, I haven't used it. But I so that could be the thing that but that could be the, the thing for the packaging part. Yeah. Okay. And that was my follow up question. Can we the low hanging fruit was the function signature? Can we use that without having the uh, runtime? I mean, is yeah. Azure going to change its function definition? Is Google? So, 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 and my reaction to that was, well, whatever we pick, we first need to talk to the, the bigger players to see if they have any interest. Not yes, they will soon, they will do it, but if they even want to consider it. Because if all the big boys come back and say, we don't even want to touch that space, then we probably don't want to pick that. So it, it, it's a little bit political. Okay. But, but for functions, for, for functions the, the decision, the, I think the decision making there is relatively simple. If, if, it's, if we think it works, and Jeff and uh, basically, the people in this room agree. We'll do it. I mean, like it, 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 there's the moral too, where it's like, look, we can't. In the next six months, we can't fund refactoring our signature, but for some GitHub.com slash Azure functions, if someone wants to go implement the adapter, we'll version it and deploy it in our service too. I do think, though, from the back to the point earlier, from a Feasibility standpoint, I share your vision where I'm like, I really want to get to a spot, and it might be two or three years down the line, or like here is what we think is the right platform. From a realistic thing, I think it's more of the gravity of the components, whether it's the scaling or the scheduling or the whatever else, and saying, like, can we at least agree on this? That's also much more feasible from us, where it's like, we already have a bunch of stuff, but we can slowly start to piece things apart. And be like, okay, we can map this in. Yeah. So my my answer to Kevin's question, my answer to Kevin's question was sort of along the lines there, where so I mean, if you only have individual brand visions for things, I do think you should take small baby steps at a time. It's too important, but I would change the answer slightly because the way you answered it, I interpreted it as code, mm -hmm. and I think we should focus on code and spec because. It, while I, while I think we all, to some degree, like Kubernetes and want to be successful, I want to make sure that people like the AWS of the world who may or may not use Kubernetes or Lambda, um, I want them to be able to support it as well. So we focus solely on Kubernetes and Lambda. And I, that may exclude other people. That's why I want to focus on the spec from the operator perspective, but then prove it with code running Kubernetes or whatever platform you want. It's kind of what you would get to the end of these new products. We might talk about another one. Right. A little bit after or something. Yes. <laughs> 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 that's sort of the vision that came in the new uh, API that is Kubernetes like and declarative, but can be implemented by multi platforms. And what you're talking about is the, that standard shape of how you, do, you know, how you ask for a service to be. So I don't know if you want to go all the way into that level, defining. How you ask for containerized service in the queue? I don't. I haven't heard that mentioned yet. Unless you can answer that part of the packaging. I don't know. What would decide what that means? Yeah, I get a little nervous about that response just personally because I don't want to be specific. I know Canada is a bit too crazy, but it is very specific to me. But it, that, that, that's what worries me a little. It's not, it's not not a lot. I know you. I know it depends your perspective. I understand. But I. I that's why. I, that's me. That little API, I don't think it's appropriate for me yet. But that's the right answer. Yeah, it's not the right answer. Okay. Yes, sir. No, no, on the, on the workflow side, right? Should we start pursuing? I mean, uh, that's what I want to talk through. Should we start pursuing the samples thing? Should we actually do that? I assume so. I, I assume you guys are already working on that. We are working on that, but uh, just, you know, 
to the entire group. I think that it might be good to get some people from governance as well, like looking at what we are doing, just getting more involved, and then get to get some advice to make sure that you know we do the right things in the right order. Yeah, I think so. I think the two things you mentioned one is sandbox project. Mm -hmm. I think from the, from the service perspective, you've already done their lesson. Yeah, go forward. So mm -hmm. go forward with that. Get time on a TOC calendar, get your course all written up. The other piece of it is getting CloudNet's people or the service working group, other service group members involved. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to say about because I don't know how you cope them appropriately because yeah. they know you exist, you're part of a working group. I don't know how you cope them to get them more involved other than maybe make sure you're on the weekly calls to talk about the progress you're making in terms of what the changes you want to expect, and then maybe mention. Where the areas would you like more feedback, mm -hmm. right? That kind of thing, maybe. Yeah, yeah, for, I'd yeah, love yeah. to know yeah. the part of our roadmap. Yes, sorry, but you have to do it. We want to make sure we Actually, I think that that's a good point. Maybe we should start um, pushing the stuff right in the last like, couple uh, of weeks. We should be meeting and then kind of have some, you know, kind of watch us. Well, we used to have a weekly time slot. Yeah, yeah, I know. So yeah. we, we can definitely uh, resurrect that. Yeah. 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 So, so I will try and do that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I just see work flow as being similar to the phone, the phone path. Yeah, you can, you, you need to do this in the sandbox just like the phone and put it in the same Yep. But, but I, I would suggest that uh, you know, find similar projects that might want to participate in the same way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, in this case, like because it's totally related with cloud events, we want to stay as close as possible, right? Like, even if you're separated, we just want to make sure that that's not like, yeah. Another thing is, originally when I started this, um, as a subgroup, you know, we play meetings, but at first there are some people that I do not have their names, their email staff. Do you still have it? I have to go back to the site. We were keeping notes of the weekly calls. I have to go back to find the people that can always send an email to the circle. Are they, are they, I'm not sure what they are. I don't know. I'll try to find the, the notes doc. Uh, okay. Yeah. So they, they have their email, email, email account information. We can reach out to them. Yeah, we'll we'll like, we're starting working on this again. Yeah, let me see if I can find that. Okay. The notes. Because we probably did by company names. Okay. Anything else we're going to improve? I feel like I'm running right into the risk of repeating everything we talked about before. <laughs> <laughs> But it does seem like there's a lot of desire around. Okay, so, so there's something that I, that I would, in my mind, classify as community evangelism and education type of stuff. There's things like the testing, the refresh, or the refresh of the white paper, the stuff like the starter kit, all in that category. And I, I think those are, I want to say, relatively short term things we could work on. But in terms of longer term things, I think that will take like a year or more of the time to Function signatures, subscription API, and this recovery then packaging. I did well, right? yeah. Now you could classify the packaging as you know your three things: the uh, policy, the packaging, the signature, all wrapped in one in terms of management of the function itself. So you that that could all be there. But it sounds like we have maybe three or four different things that are outcome of this meeting right here that they pack the full work group to say. What do you guys think? Or other things we're missing? And have that next little discussion there. And that's the subscription at the end, the, the function signature stuff is probably in, in independent enough that you could go ahead and do those with her. Okay, that's the excellent question. We, the, the service working group kind of serializes work. We basically put the service working group kind of on hold on the products. What do people think about? Level of commitment to working on the next big thing. Do people think we actually have the bandwidth to do more than one thing? Any comments? I know a lot of you guys don't participate on a regular basis, but for your background, cloud events, at least have a single credit, and we basically did all most real work on the one hour a week phone call we had because most people were busy with other things. And well, it was, but, that's not quite true. Well, okay. Some of us did that outside the one hour, yes. But those are the, the, the more active people. But for the most part, we, we, we did a lot of work during the one hour. 
to get everybody out of the side out of the job, so the side group can work together. And so we agree to do more than one thing at a time. Chances are they will not be the same model. You can't do both things in one hour time frame. I just want to mention that for anybody. Well, I think it, it matters in terms of how many people would you get interested into multiple uh, uh, activities. As we take this back into the social working group, we may be able to get some of the people that dropped out by the big projects to come back into serverless and be able to participate in some of these other topics that might be of more interest to them. Sure. If that's the case, you may be able to get a pretty good mass on multiple projects and look forward back to serverless. Sure. We would just need to make sure we do coordination. I get the sense that of all the things we talked about, there is a cloud events theme running through them, and we want to make sure that they're all consistent, both the projects are consistent. I, I, I'd also say with respect to the you know, lessons learned architecture, we may be able to do slot, you know, a working group on one week, the next week of architecture, and you know, something like that, to, to you know, be, able, be able to get those lessons learned and to break up the time that you spend. I think that's a suggestion. No, they meetings, but we couldn't meet and concentrate on the hearing. That's that. We could. And the thing I always that Mark and I were talking about lunch is we don't have a very asynchronous model for doing things like merging pull requests. Everything, all pull requests were merged during the phone calls. And that had good and bad points. One of the big bad points was we only merged pull requests during the one hour time slot. The good point was it, it ensured that we could force people to pay attention. Because they, you know, not everybody worked on things offline. We forced them to at least hear about the discussion and voice a concern. They had that chance to, to voice an opinion. And it wasn't just, oh, two LTTM and poof, it was merged, right? We enforced that community consensus. If we only had, for example, if we only did cloud events every other week, that would be my to slow us down. So we need to think about do we want to change our process or our, our working group model? I don't know. Yeah, I'm sorry, I think about uh, Like in serverless, in my mind, service working group is an interesting group. It is so, I guess, relatively new. It's still pretty cutting edge. I'm curious if anyone knows like how some of the other working groups, is it like they choose one project or is it more that they meet weekly, but it's like we're going to do 10 minutes of update for this thing, 10 minutes of update for that thing? I'm just curious if, if other. Um, Anybody else like the SIG network? Uh, right, yeah. Anybody yeah. yeah. just join that? I don't know how they work. I, I thought they had a single spec. I don't know. Yeah, for the most part, it's similar to this. I think one thing to see an IOT and put it in the network. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
in some respects almost reduces the pressure on us to say we don't necessarily have to meet your timeline. Sure. Because the timeline already exists. Yeah, we yeah. Can make sure we do this right. Sure. I guess that's the way I think. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. Is there anything else we can talk about in terms of resolution? Because I feel like we've come with a list. We can think back with your full group. Is there anything else you guys want to discuss? Are there an exception in this meeting right now we should do? Uh, there were uh, you know, startup live documentation evangelism and all that stuff, which I also seem to do that with customers, really. Especially if very early they start with startups who are moving from everybody wants to do Kubernetes, startups that need to pay, so it's not worth it. It requires a certain skill to make sense, but it requires a problem. And I'm also seeing a lot of uh, lack of documentation best practice in this stuff like that. I've seen Todd blog posts sharing the same solution for the same problem a lot of time. This might be very, very early, but would we get something for Kubecon Amsterdam that's more intense than the serverless tradition? We would like some workshop, some bootcamp, some something. So let me clarify, when you start talking about lack of documentation and stuff like that, lack of documentation about what? There was, uh, okay, at the phase two, not in this phase two, at the virtual Federal in Barcelona, uh, a lot a lot of people complain that they don't know how to take a microservice for a legacy application to do certain that. How, they were, they were complaining about how you decide what is a function, how to build that tree, how are you tracking up functions, you know, like groups of functions, services, stuff like that. And there are no, Large, there are very, very few large scale packages of this. Uh, I'm not saying, and I personally, I want to do some talks and public architecture stuff. I don't have enough time, but I want to do it. It's annoying. And again, this is a really, really, really love to have something more hands on at two months and then, like some workshop. Hey, we'll study that. Let's build some functions. Let's build some architecture stuff for. The I know something. The disconnect for me is that CloudVance helps this high friction place of how do I transport transport data between two things mm -hmm. where I can I don't need to have to pick the theory technology. Um, if we jump all the way to here's how to make serverless applications, I, I don't think that's <coughs> that I don't I think I don't think we're there yet. Yeah. We need to find the next tech friction thing and help make it agnostic to your choices. So what's the what's the thing that we'll struggle with in serverless compute things that, that would benefit from some standardization so that they can make portable decisions? Yeah we standardize the architecture and experiments and workshops. No I don't I mean, think there's so, so many options. Alright the best practice to transfer yeah. like is totally Parameters for that particular architecture. Because oh, yeah, I agree. Yes, like, no. this, this one can live for 45 minutes and it's durable and it will restart in the middle. This one, you've got five minutes and good luck. Yeah, I phrase it very good. No, no, no. no, no, no. <laughs> I, I just, that's what we're trying to get to eventually, but we're just not there yet. I would still love some workshops. I have some, some more stuff. Can you, can, can you, not right now, but maybe write down your idea for a workshop that's a little more concrete, it's still a little fuzzy in my head. When I think of workshop, I'm thinking, okay, you're going to have some stuff on a computer to play with something. Yeah. But how do you not turn that into an advertising for that particular platform? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. that, and I thought it was struggling. Yeah. Yeah, it could be a better specific thing right now, but it really can't. Yeah. Be. Yeah. And, and then it's the question what is the right thing to do in the, in the cloud events, uh, sorry, cloud native foundation setting that you're going to talk about? Because we, We'll be happy to set up an out of functions workshop. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, did not think of that. It's not a smart idea. I just don't know how to do it. And it's not like a sales pitch. Yeah, yeah, that's not going to work. You're going to get very, very convoluted with K native or whatever. So it's, and then it's all of a sudden, it's like, no, yeah. I did not get this year. So that's fine. We're all done with it. But the aspiration is. That was that. No, what's interesting is I think once we have all the, the various 
or you have a set of building block and components from the specification perspective with implementations of those very specifications, then you can have a workshop that shows an ability, that shows how you can use these things on various platforms. You have an Azure Google here, Azure platform here, yeah. Google platform here, and they all work with various user reference various components, they all talk to one another. Then you can start doing workshop on how people can use these things. And then you can show how you migrate for your model or your own service or your function that leverages these things. I think we will be able to get there eventually. I just don't think we're there yet with just the content. Okay. Anything else? Control together. Okay. I think it was useful in terms of helping consolidate our thinking process. So thank you guys very much for joining, especially the, the newcomers who don't really participate in the whole thing. We really appreciate that. So thank you guys very much for joining at the end. Please call. Join me in the call to continue the discussion. Talk to them before we go next. And if we do another round of the comments, I know who you can see. So what's the anybody interested in grabbing drinks or something to celebrate one point of release? Well, thank you. Yeah, yeah, but off, off party. Thank you, Tommy. Yeah. 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 Yeah.